All right, so welcome to this really quick uh, review of the Rack 7246 uh, LoRa One Gateway that came out just uh, a few uh, weeks ago. The unique thing about this one is that it's uh, the full eight-channel gateway, uh, so it's Class A and C compliant. It uses a Raspberry Pi Zero at the back, at the base, and then it has this rack hat on top of it. It comes with two options. There's one that it's only with uh, the LoRa without the GPS and the GPS antenna, uh, essentially. Although I believe this, the module, the hat itself does support it. So if you buy without it and really add the GPS uh, antenna to it. So there are a few things that are really frustrating about this uh, design. So the one thing I didn't, I couldn't figure out was essentially the, where the antenna should go. Uh, essentially these, these connectors are the same, but you have no way of knowing where the LoRa antenna goes and where the GPS antenna goes. So there are no markings on this case. Uh, the other thing that really frustrates me and the slot for the SD card is so tiny, there's no way you can like use fingers to take it out. You literally have to unscrew every, uh, you disassemble this box entirely. And the crazy thing is it has like how many screws? Yeah, six screws just to take this apart. So if you want to pull out the SD card, I tried it with the tweezers and I broke off the kind of the back of the SD card and turns out that, that there is some the PCB still extends that part and that was a frozen like a fried card. I couldn't use it anymore. So I had to like uh, burn some fresh software from it for it. Uh, the software that is on their website um, is actually not working. It's been uploaded on the 19th of March 2012. That is a, there's a, like an error when you try to download it. It's something has gone wrong when it's being you know, compressed. The nice thing is nice thing about it is that it's uh, on GitHub as well. You can just download the core Raspbian image and then uh, clone this GitHub repository, run the installer script, and it's going to set up uh, the SD card and the configuration, install all the packages, install the the packet forwarder um, for you. So that's really nice. So going back to the design, as I said, uh, I actually put this Velcro myself, so that wasn't there. This is a way for me to attach the GPS antenna without, uh, yeah, I just want to keep it together until I figure out a better place to put this one. If we want to make this kind of user friendly, beginner friendly, then having those labels is a must. Also, another thing to note is that it does really get hot. So I haven't measured the power consumption. There's a heat sink on top of it. And uh, you see, and that one got, gets really hot. Uh, so for the low power applications, obviously, if the one thing, if the node, if the lower node is low power, then the receiving side has to be high power because, I mean, the data gets has to get from one place to the other somehow. Now let's look at the software. So uh, it's pretty much like a bunch of bash scripts that pulls things from all kinds of places. So when you when you first fired this up, when I still had the original SD card that came from uh, with the box. So when you start this up, it, it's going to create an access point uh, and it's going to be like rack something and then the first few um, uh, digits and numbers from your from the Mac ID of this. Essentially, you connect to it, and there's a default username, uh, there's a default password for it. And now you can SSH into it. A nice thing would be that you would actually have like a web um, GUI for configuring and starting uh, the, the LoRa gateway, uh, but that's not the case. Yeah, so you can see it has its own welcome screen on all things and all that. Yeah, and then you have this um, gateway config. Uh, so you can do all kinds of things. You can set the Pi password. Um, set up the LoRa concentrator and essentially you specify which server you're passing or communicating with. If it's a TTN, uh, then you specify the frequency for this and then it copies it over that configuration and then it says it's restarted the packet forwarder. Edit the config, which is going to pull like a nano config um, editor. So you have to be like know how to get around this. Mm. So it's not very user friendly, but yeah, this is where the config lives. So it'd be nice if this all of this was um, like a GUI on, on the web interface for that static IP address. I don't see an, a problem with that, except maybe if you were on a public network, you would not want it to expose that configuration screen without some kind of password, etc. So I understand why that wasn't the like top one priority because it could potentially have some security vulnerabilities. The node that I used for testing was this was based on the ESP8266 
8266. So it's a for Wemos node uh, D1 Mini. Well, sorry, Wemos D1 Mini, that's it. This is the, the GitHub repo from Charles. That's the shield, this is how you connect it. The nice thing about this one is that you don't really need any passives. As, as long as you have that radio module, you can just order these and then solder it. It's at the back here. It works great. This antenna, this is like a quarter wavelength uh, for the European frequency. That was like 8.6 uh, uh, centimeters. It logs to the syslog. So if you do uh, pseudo tail, real time, wild log and syslog, it's probably an easier way to get this. Uh, but here you can see all the traffic and everything from the gateway. So if I'm gonna plug this in now, we should start seeing a lot of traffic because this one is just sending nonsense every four seconds or something. Yeah, there you go. So that, that that's trans transferring data that's just sending things and then the gateway is intercepting it and forwarding it to to the, um, the things network at a hundred and something US dollars is cheaper than anything else we've seen, except maybe for the things network indoor gateway, but that's still very kind of hard to get. This one is really nice. It's open source, so you can hack around with it. This is a good way to get started with LoRa and have a fully compatible, like a gateway that is actually helpful to the community where the nodes transfer transmitting on any of the, the eight frequencies are actually able to uh, kind of use this gateway. So that's a great benefit of this. Uh, there's some issues with the casing, as I said, kind of labeling things, etc. Uh, that uh, there's no way to get this one out. I tried with tweezers as well. That didn't work out well. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, you can find a link below to the AliExpress store and their own store. Uh, so if you do get it, uh, just let me know how that works for you. And um, yeah, see you next time.